cover your hair. Why do you not eat meat on Fridays? I do. We are... <laughs> I can't eat you. Welcome to Aspiring Hollywood. I'm Luciano Saber, and today I have another person involved with Bloomers uh, by the name of Swathi Capilla. She's a cast member of Bloomers and other great projects that I'm sure she will uh, talk to us about. Swathi, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Luciano. Yes, so <laughs> tell me about yourself. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> Start from the day you were born. Oh, no, I'm kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was born in a small old town. No. I was. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I've been in LA for a, a little bit over a year. I came via New York okay. and then before that, South Florida, sunny South Florida. So I feel at home here in LA. Right. Um, yeah. So, so I just uh, interviewed, as you know, Matt, the creator yes, of the yes, show I that you're, Matt. you're, yeah. you're starting in. Um, I want to talk to you about, because I'm sure a lot of actresses out there would be interested in finding out, how did you land that role? How did you get it? I auditioned. I mean, <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a rare thing, but I yeah. kind of just saw it um, on Actors Access and was yeah. lucky enough to get an audition. I had moved to, uh, to L.A. like a week before. Yeah. It was the first audition I had in L.A. And, um, well, you know, I, obviously in New York I'd been auditioning a lot. But, um, yeah, and then just... There you go. There you have it. And, and it, it was very exciting because I found out that, you know, I was one of the only actresses that got to audition for, for a part. So um, mm -hmm. it was a lucky bit of a streak of luck. So tell yeah. me about the part that you're playing. I play Joanna. She is a Muslim American uh, woman, a young woman. Uh, she works in the underwear uh, office. At, she, she deals with the fabrics, which is interesting because she actually wears, she's always covered in a hijab. <laughs> but she's also a very edgy girl and yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah. And um, I, I kind of have a, a crush on a boy in the office who uh, is, is not Muslim. So uh, there's a bit of, you know, that, that is a little bit a little problematic. There's some conflict there. Yeah. Yeah, but um, I'm really excited for the second season because I think that our relationship continues to develop, hopefully. Well, what I've seen so far is great. I mean, very, very funny show. And um, I think that was you in a scene that I watched this morning, actually, where you're putting on a jock strap. Is that you? Did you oh, do that? Oh, yeah, that was me. <laughs> Yeah, bro. What? Joanna? I know about the rat. What about my rat? <laughs> we have to talk to Matt about giving us that, that clip because it was very oh, funny. Oh, gosh. There was, there, <laughs> yeah. There, like I said, Joanna, yeah. she is a spunky girl. I mean, just because somebody is traditional in, in certain aspects of their life doesn't mean that they can't be a lot of fun. Yeah. And, um, and I think that Joanna is. So what other projects are you working on? Uh, you know, I feel like acting and, and um, well, the whole business is just a matter of kind of shuffling uh, various projects simultaneously. Um, okay, well, uh, I've got an audition this week for an independent feature. I'm, div I'm writing a horror film um, because those just <laughs> do so well and I'm finally giving in and, and, and going for it but I, I, I refuse to, to write a horror film unless I had like a very kind of interesting take on it and I think that me and my writing partner we do so I'm um, also writing a feature about um, the interesting uh, competitive subculture of well okay, the, the interesting subculture of competitive Bhangra, which is Indian dancing, oh. um, there is a crazy underworld of like, think like bring it on, like cheerleaders competing in college, and, 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 but there's a whole world that's just like Indians, and, and, and it's, it's basically writing parts for, for, for yourself and your friends, which is the way <laughs> to do it. It is, right. it is. Sure. And then um, something recently that I had a lot of fun, a lot of fun doing was this Amnesty International um, video for, for this program they have called Use Your Voice. And um, it was based off of a true story about an Iranian, Iranian actress um, who was imprisoned for filming um, a project in New Zealand where she had her hijab off for one scene. And she was imprisoned just for 
basically they said indefinitely until Amnesty International stepped in and people wrote letters and petitions and then finally under the pressure the Iranian government um, released her and so oh, wow. I got to do this little 30 second video about it and it was a lot of fun and I mean really just the work that 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 I got to do was really interesting yeah well it sounds like you're off to a good start right I mean having just you know, arrived in LA and you're doing all these projects um, that's good to hear it it, it, yeah. it never feels that way because it's just <laughs> such a you know constantly yeah. going and and like I said you know you gotta be a writer and a, you a producer and a, an actor you can't just I feel like you have to find what makes you unique and and that's always changing. And what know. makes you unique? Um, I think what what may make me unique is is I know that many people have wanted to do this their whole life and have worked at it their whole life. Um, I, I also kind of realized at a very young age what I wanted to do and I kind of made it my mission to educate myself as much as possible. I come from a family of doctors and they didn't really know how to help me do uh, to accomplish my dreams and all they could say is well you know we went to school and we worked hard so maybe that's just what you do too and so literally when I was what eight years old I, I enrolled in like a professional you know traveling theater company and then I went to an arts middle school arts high school NYU film school I just was very very focused on learning as much about the industry um, just yeah, learning as much as I could. Yeah. And, um, and I think that, especially being Indian, I think that there are a lot of, we're starting to see a lot more um, of our presence in the media. But a lot of the people that are kind of finding acting and discovering acting, they're new to it. They're people that studied engineering or, or medicine, and then they're like, but I really want to be an actress. And I think that what makes me unique is there was never anything else I, I, I would do. <laughs> there was never anything else I could think of doing. Well, and, well uh, that's the right attitude yeah, to have, right? Yeah, but, I, I, yeah, I but, agree. But, but let me ask you this, since you mentioned that. What is your fear? Since I have, have been so kind of focused and, and, and on, on this one track my whole life, my, my fear would be not reaching the audience, not not being able to make an impact on the world the way that when I was younger I really wanted to do because the movies I watched growing up they formed the human being that I am today and not just because I want to be an actress but because they you know got me through hard times and they helped me to understand things that maybe my parents couldn't explain to me and and I knew that I wanted to do that for someone else and so if, if I don't reach that audience I know that 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 would be so scary for me <laughs> and I can't even imagine it so <laughs> well moving on to happier things. okay happier times I like it where do you see yourself five years from now um you know that is very connected to my fears I do see myself in five years I, I, I want to be a household name I want to be able to bridge um I feel like Hollywood even though you know different ethnicities and minority groups are appearing and, and coming out of the woodwork, I, I feel that there's still a lot of work to be done and, and I would love the ability to be one of those people that someone in the middle of America would be like, oh no, I, yeah, I know that person. And it's not just that they're a niche cultural actor, but somebody that I can relate to, even though I may be, you know, Christian and, and from a small town. Right. So that would be very exciting if I could do that. That is very exciting yeah. because you will do that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I hope so. Very good. One last question before we wrap it up. Sure. What advice would you have for an aspiring actress such as yourself coming to Los Angeles? I would say, now Now, this may not be the advice that you get from, from most people, especially in Hollywood. I mean, the truth is, bottom line, is money. And it is, you know, finding out how to, to reach that, the audience in mass. But I would say... It re I meet so many people on a daily basis and I can kind of put them into two categories and it's the people that have educated themselves and are smart, intelligent actors, directors, writers, producers versus the people that I know that they have that, that desire but they have not put in the work, the legwork that it takes to, to sustain in this industry because they, they say that people last two years, usually there's, there's kind of a cutoff point and I think that in order to get past that what you're going to really have to rely on is is what you know and, and your education. It'll give you integrity and that'll keep you going. Right. 
Well, that's great advice. Very good. Thank you so much for joining us today. And guys, uh, watch Swathi on Bloomers on Blip TV. And, and uh, keep an eye out for her because five years from now, she will be a household name. <laughs> there you go. Thank you again for joining us and nice meeting you. And thank you guys for watching. Please join us again on Aspiring Hollywood. Until then, I'm Luciano Sabres.